Tonight, President Obama will arguably give his most important speech. It is one that may decide whether or not he wins four more years in office. Our next guest says if the president really wants to get unemployment back below 8 percent, he needs to take more risks. IHS chief economist Nariman Baravish is with us now. He is one of the most accurate forecasters on the overall economy. It makes him a Bloomberg best. He joins us from Lexington, Massachusetts. Nariman, glad to have you back on the inside track. $300 billion, talk of tax cuts, talk of infrastructure spending. In your view, that's not enough. That's right. Uh, just to start off, this is only half a loaf because half of this is extending the payroll tax cuts we put in place at the beginning of the year and the unemployment insurance benefits. So in terms of net new stimulus, it's only $150 billion. That is small potatoes given the kind of challenge that the economy faces. You would need something around $800, $900 billion to really kickstart this economy. So he really should go out and be very, very bold. I don't think there's anything to lose at this point, and that's what's needed. He has nothing to lose, Nariman, that's what you're saying. How, though, would eight or nine hundred billion dollars be politically feasible at this point? He has everything to lose yeah. with the Republican Party and with Congress. He's had trouble with both. You're absolutely right about that. My point here is, though, whether it's three hundred billion or nine hundred billion, he's probably going to get the same argument. So why not go out there and be bold? And if it's shot down, he can say to the American public, look, we had the answer. Uh, all I'm saying is politically, there's nothing for him to lose in terms of re-election if he goes and is bold, basically. Nariman, if you would, please try to help us understand how little $300 billion or $150 billion will accomplish. You've done some number crunching. If that's what we get from the president, and let's assume that that's what Congress uh, goes ahead and authorizes him to do, what kind of impact would that have on the unemployment rate, for example, and what impact might an eight or nine hundred billion dollar stimulus package have on the unemployment rate over the course of the next year? Well, just looking at the unemployment rate, say 150 billion net new would reduce the unemployment rate by a tenth or two. Not very much. Whereas something like 900 billion could reduce it by as much as a percentage point, which is really what he's looking for, is to be able to say, look, I, you know, I was the reason, I was the person who helped to, to uh, improve the recovery, to improve the jobs prospects. But that's what you need, something big. Nariman, we know, obviously, the president would love to be the person that says, I fixed this huge unemployment yeah. problem, or at least addressed it in a competent way in the U.S., but then what does he do with the money? What's the most efficient use of funds? Because you're right. I mean, I, I think if he's asking for $300 billion or $900 billion, the argument, the fight is going to be the same. And, of course, there's going to be a question of efficiency, right? Are you going to waste this money or not sure. is a question he's going to have to indirectly face. You're absolutely right, Deirdre. Um, I think history suggests that, in fact, infrastructure spending, sort of jobs programs, uh, uh, work, work programs of this kind tend to have the biggest impact on the unemployment rate. Uh, they can be wasteful. You have to be very careful about that. But certainly infrastructure spending, which we badly need, by the way, in the U.S., would do the trick. So, to, again, a big infrastructure program with a lot of incentives to get it going right away. The problem, one of the problems with infrastructure is there tends to be delays because of the political process of state and local governments. If you can get it kick-started fairly quickly, it could have a big impact. Nariman, are you so pessimistic, shall we say, about the prospects for this presidential address that uh, it's not even worth tuning into? <laughs> I wouldn't quite put it that way, but I'm not holding out a lot of hope. So what else might we hear from the administration? This speech is supposed to do it all, right? This is the speech that's supposed to save the presidency, galvanize the country, put America back to work, if you're right and it's not going to be very effective, what else might the administration need to start considering at this point? That's a really good question, Eric. I think what has happened is this president has not been presidential. He hasn't led, really. He's been sort of caught in the, in the uh, sort of slugfest, if you will, that's been going on in Washington. And what he needs to do is, in fact, be more presidential, in, a, in effect, say, uh, to, to all politicians, both sides of the aisles, look, let's stop this childish bickering, let's get on with it, because that childish bickering is part of the problem, is part of what's spooked the market. So if he can sort of convey that message, the sort of FDR kind of message, if you want to call it that, uh, from the 1930s, then I think he may have accomplished a lot. Well, 
I guess there, it is worth tuning in after all this evening. <laughs> Nariman, good to see you. Thanks so much. Nariman Thank Barovish, he's the chief economist at IHS.